You're reviewing the Cobra flamethrowers? What was underrated about them? Well, you know how in the comics and cartoons, the insides of Cobra bases have this moody quality, mostly achieved by torches and bonfires? Who do you think lights those? Um, uh, anybody passing by with a lighter? Logically, yes, but this is Cobra we're talking about here, and they have a Viper for everything. Hello everyone, I'm Forum BX257, and for my part in the third annual Cobra Convergence, I'll be taking a look at the 1991 incinerators, the Cobra Flamethrowers. Now, as far as I can tell, they did not make any comic book appearances in the old level comic run at least, but they made their first animated appearance in the Deke animated episode titled General Confusion. First, let's take a look at the incinerator's accessories, starting with his flamethrower. It doesn't have any type of exotic name. And as far as I'm aware, it's not based on a real-world flamethrower. I could be wrong on that. It's sort of a science fiction-y kind of a look. But then again, real flamethrowers kind of are. As you can see, on the back of this thing, we had a peg, and we have a standard G.I. Joe black hose. And of course, we had a peg on the side, just right there, on his backpack. And these are, of course, the fuel tanks. According to the instructions, this is the way you're supposed to put this thing on the figure, with these nozzle-looking things just over his shoulders. However, I've seen a lot of collectors actually put it on this way, so that the peg is near his hip and on his right side, rather than on the left side over his shoulder. Personally, I like this, this way as well. This big tank is just right behind his head, but it still fits on and doesn't look like it's upside down or anything. And finally, like a lot of 1991 figures, the incinerator comes with a gimmick accessory. In this case, it's what the contents list on the card calls a catapult incendiary grenade launcher. But rather than calling them grenades, the contents list calls these things flame canisters, and you get two of these. The catapult itself is a four-piece construction. You have the base and framework, a separate arm, a lever, which you should leave in the uh, backward position, and the rubber band. Of course, the rubber band which came with the catapult was not unique. Any office elastic band will actually do here. Here I have a like one inch or one and a half inch elastic band here, and that's what I've used with this. I actually didn't buy one with the elastic band because, well, to be honest, most sellers actually don't uh, sell them with the bands for some strange reason. Of course, the originals will probably just dry up in the package anyway, so you're better off just replacing it. And you can actually just take it off and replace it fairly easily. You don't have to take the catapult apart to do it. I kind of wish the lever was long enough for the figure to naturally hold it onto it uh, in a one knee kneeling position like you would with most soldier figures, but unfortunately it's just a little bit too small. Of course, you're going to want to do that with your own hands if you're going to want to launch these things. And this thing actually launches quite well. 
Like I said, the lever should be in its backward position like this. You push this thing down and you can see that there are tiny little notches here. The round notch is actually just for the rubber band and not for the lever. So you push this thing all the way down, you straighten it up to lock over that one little notch and you're ready to put the flame canister on here. It just sits right there and you just hold on to it, pull the lever back and man that thing really flies. As you know, Hasbro reuses the molds of the figures and accessories constantly, so it was really no surprise to me that the incinerator's flamethrower was reused quite a few times, especially in the 1993 Balcor line. A lot of the Cobras actually came with a remolded version of his flamethrower in different colors. What I was surprised by is how often Hasbro reused the catapult of all things. First, the catapult was heavily modified for the 1992 and 93 releases of General Flag, replacing the fireballs with a missile. Also in 92, it was modified in a different way for the Cobra Parasite vehicle, again replacing the fireballs, this time with mines. In 1994, the original catapult mold and fireballs were used for Star Brigade figure effects accessories. A non-G.I. Joe use in 94 was a reuse of the Cobra Parasite modification on the Stargate movie Toy Tie-In Mass Stage. And finally in 1995, a third modification of the catapult was used for the Sergeant Savage Arctic Stormtrooper, this time with blue balls. Insert your joke here. Even without his accessories on him, the Incinerators is actually a really nice figure, sculpt. He has a really cool helmet very, very much in keeping with the Cobra aesthetic. It almost looks like something Cobra Commander would have worn himself. And of course, the red visor is something which a lot of the 1991 Cobras seem to have, like the Interrogators and that new version of Cobra Commander which came out that year. Also nice is the fact that we get a sculpted on Cobra symbol on his chest there. That's not something that's going to rub off very easily. And while it is true that he has a lot of bright orange on him, it's kind of understandable. A lot of these hazard duty uh, figures, support figures, usually have these type of bright orange jumpsuits for protection. But this is a very strange texture that we have on this figure. It's like tiny little nodules. It kind of reminds me of the 1987 Nemesis Enforcer. He had this strange bubbly texture on him as well. I'm guessing that's part of the um, flame protection unit that uh, this thing seems to have. It's like a lot of um, cables or perhaps tubes to keep him nice and cool when he's using his hot flamethrower. Very interesting though that uh, his chest is made up of this red quilted uh, vest piece Kind of reminds me of a, uh, of a pineapple grenade, to be honest. But like I said, his helmet and of course the uh, cobra symbol on his chest really gives him a nice presence. But does he look like a flamethrower specifically? Well, no, not really. I mean, he could be just about anything, but he is a nice looking figure. According to his file card, which is something that's new to 1991 characters, they put uh, which vehicles that he could operate. Uh, one of them is the Piranha, which is the boat that I recently reviewed. And that's one of the reasons why I actually mentioned this strange quilted vest, because it does kind of look like a life vest that you would find on Navy personnel. So if you didn't know that he was a flamethrower, you could totally see him as a driver of this vehicle. But the real question is, are the incinerators, as a toy, underrated? And I think they totally are. As you saw before, without his accessories, he looks perfectly fine as a vehicle driver. And with just his tanks and his flamethrower, he looks the part. He doesn't look like he's missing anything, and he definitely doesn't rely on his gimmick weapon in order to convey that he is a flamethrower specialist. So exactly what do you do with the catapult then? Well, the catapult is in itself a complete toy. 
So if you have an extra figure who is missing the tanks and flamethrower, you can have them as a complete separate figure just for the catapult alone. And these two figures, they don't look like they're missing anything. Now, as Cobra's first official flamethrower trooper, you'd think that he doesn't really have too much company, but he actually does. In 1983, we have the Battle Armor Snake, which has an arm attachment, a flamethrower. So that anybody actually using the battle armor could be a flamethrower. In 1985, we have the Dreadnought Torch, who, while this is an acetylene torch and used for welding and cutting, in the cartoon, it was also used as a flamethrower, somehow. But he's also an individual. Less specialized are the Cobra Bats from 1986, who also had, like the Battle Armor Snake, a flamethrower arm attachment. As a matter of fact, it's so prominent that the Bat Card Art actually has him using this. So just who are the rivals for the incinerators on the G.I. Joe team? Well, we have one of the most famous flamethrowers on the G.I. Joe team, the 1984 Blowtorch. And we have the 1988 Charbroil, as well as the 1994 Ice Cream Soldier, which I don't have here. Uh, one thing I do have to mention is that sometimes I use the term opposite number and rival interchangeably, even though technically they're not. These guys are rivals because they have the same uh, specialty. But a true opposite number on the G.I. Joe side would be the 1985 Barbecue, the Firefighter. And this is where, as a character, I think the incinerators are completely underrated. Because think about it. If this is really his only opposite number, this is the only firefighter that G.I. Joes have. It's true that in 1992 we get a new version of Barbecue, but it's still the same character. He just It's just one firefighter for the entire G.I. Joe team. Whereas Cobra now has a legion of flamethrowers. United Kingdom and European second releases of 1990 characters had variant accessories and card art. They did this in order to catch up with U.S. releases that had gimmicks. The variant Saw Viper came with the incinerators, flamethrower, fireballs, and catapult, with no explanation. The Fun School of India version of the incinerators, released in 2003, was pretty bizarre. It came with the 1992-93 General Flag catapult and missiles, the 1988 Toxo Viper backpack, and 1987 Dodger rifle, all in Easter egg colors. If you're looking for an incinerators on the aftermarket, I have to say that they're fairly easy to find, complete with all of their parts, and you can see that there are a lot of parts. But you will find them complete and for a fairly good price, considering uh, some of the markup that some 1991 figures actually are starting to get. But I think a lot of collectors are actually stopping short of just getting the figure by itself, and just the tanks and maybe the uh, flamethrower, just so that, you know, he is a flamethrower. Just sort of skipping the gimmick, which is kind of unfortunate, but I can understand that. However, despite the fact that he's a fairly sturdy figure overall, and there isn't very much to look out for in terms of breakages, there is one breakage point here, and that is the lever for the catapult. Sometimes you will find it either broken or missing from the catapult altogether. One reason that I think is because it looks kind of more intuitive to actually uh, pull the lever forward rather than backwards. And I think that by pulling it forward, you're probably just popping it out of the uh, frame or snapping it off, which is kind of unfortunate.
friends, and welcome to Cobra Convergence 3. Every year in the month of July, the G.I. Joe fan community comes together to create videos about G.I. Joe's enemy, Cobra. This year's Cobra Convergence will be bigger and better than ever. More creators, more videos, all through the month of July 2018. Retro Blasted 4 BX257 Half the Battle G.I. Jova Dryden Comic Tropes Bright Shearer SEO Toy Review My Side of the Laundry Room The Human Mechanism The Skull Review Mr. 1013 HCC 788 this year we are looking at Cobra toys and characters that we think are underrated but still deserve your attention. You will receive a Cobra related video from each of these creators, so make sure you check out all of them. You don't want to miss anything. Please join us as we kick off the third year of Cobra Convergence. Cobra Commander wants you. Cobra!